I'll start off. I'm going to continue on what I was talking about last time with um, budgeting and managing a risk. And you know, if you are really ready to start investing. Um, so first of all, um, know your own risks and think in the terms of percentages. Um, you know, whether you have a million dollars in your account or a hundred dollars in your account, think in percentages. A 1% gain is a 1% gain. Um, same thing with a 10%, same thing with a hundred percent. You should be just as excited as a 50% gain on a million dollar account and a 50% gain on a hundred dollar account because both are extremely risky, and, you know, both paid off. Um, but let's, let, let's talk as if you had a smaller account. So let's say, um, I'm just going to throw out a number. For example, if you had like $500 and you wanted to invest, just like your you know, grandma used to tell you, don't spend all that $500 all at once. Um, you want to spread it out. You want it to diversify a little bit. You want to plan for worst case scenario. And that worst case scenario is, what if I lose it all? So if you have $500 and you put it all in one thing, you buy a call for $500 and it goes south and you lose $500, well, guess what? You're back at the beginning. Now you got to put more money in your account. Just because you have a certain amount of money in your buying power doesn't mean you have to use it. This this is pertaining mainly to people who um, don't like a whole lot of risk. So um, depending on your age will depend on what your risk is. For example, if you're younger and you have income, you have time to bump up your risk a little bit. You know, if you're in your mid 20s and you make a stupid play and you lose money, that's okay. You're in your mid twenties. You're going to be working for a long, long period of time. And you're not ready to retire just yet. So you can make those stupid risky plays and, you know, because you're going to be making up that money later on in life. However, if you're older, if you're closer to retirement age, you can't be making those risky plays. Eventually you're going to get to the time where you're done working. So you have no income or you're going to be on a fixed income for the rest of your life. So your, your risk level should be a lot lower. Me, I'm in my mid 30s, so I'm kind of in that range of, you know, I got, I've got a few more years of working until I retire, so I can have my risk up a little bit. But I'm not in my, you know, my early 20s anymore, so I don't go too crazy. So I, I manage my risk based off of my age. So that time can either work for you or against you. The, the reason why that I do a whole lot of those like iron condors and credit spreads and debit spreads and things like that is because I don't want to take a whole lot of risk. Um, I may not make a whole lot. My chance of success is higher by doing those. If, for example, if I do a put credit spread, if, if I look at something and go, okay, even if this stock drops way down, I mean, just totally tanks, can I still make money? And the answer is yes. With, with credit spreads and debit spreads, you can't. Um, you won't make a lot, but it's better than losing. If I have the choice between a 5% chance on making a 95% profit, or a 95% chance on making a 5% profit, I would definitely pick the latter. Think about that, a 95% chance to make a 5% profit. I'm throwing thousands and thousands of dollars into that one because my chance of success is high. I don't like low chances of success to get a high profit. Again, me, I'm all about base hits. Just win the game with base hits. But if I think if I was younger though, if I was in my early 20s, you know, it would be okay to, to risk a little bit more to go for that home run every now and then, but um, but if you're older, definitely minimize your risk a, a lot more. So have a plan is kind of my uh, my main focus of today. And part of that plan is is budgeting how much you're going to invest. So for example, I I have a weekly amount that I put into my my investment account. So from my paychecks that I get from working every week, I still add to my account. Um, I may make a lot with investing, but I'm still adding to my account. So for example, if I have a weekly amount, I take that amount and I divide it by five. That's my daily amount. And I never, ever, ever break that amount. I only use that specific amount for that day. If I use all of it in one day, or if I use all of it, sorry, in one hour, then I'm done for the whole day. I'm very disciplined with my money because y you have to be. So for example, I take that daily amount and I know that I'm using about 30% um, on options, about 40% for stocks, and the other 30%, I'm using it for what I call like a rainy day, um, just in case I need to average down or if something looks really good, you know, some good news came out on, on something so I can use that extra 30%. So for example, if I put $1,000 in my weekly spending account for that week, that means I'm only using $200 on Monday, $200 on Tuesday, $200 on Wednesday, etc. Of that $200, I'm only doing $60 for options. Your choices are limited. You know, if you're only spending $60 in one day for an option contract, you don't have a lot of, you know, large cap stocks that you're going to be messing with. So 
but again, that's just my style. That's just what I do is, is, is I take, you know, a certain amount of money and I go, how much can I use per day? And I just do the math. Um, and, and the reason why I do it is because I'm not hundred percent right all the time. If I was, I'd be a multi-billionaire and you probably wouldn't even hear from me. I, I do it because I know I'm going to be wrong. I expect to be wrong. As long as I'm right most of the time, I'm fine. But knowing that I'm going to be wrong is the reason why I limit the amount of money that I spend per day. So I think it's important to know that. You could be invested in something, you could buy a bunch of contracts and all of a sudden bad news on the company comes out, everything goes south quicker than you can sell your contracts. That happens, you know, it, it happens um, a lot. Same thing with just the opposite. You could be, you know, doing horrible, some good news can come out, your contracts go way up. So it, it all depends. You also learn to, learn to average down and take profits along the way. Be okay with a 4% profit. Be okay with a 5% profit, especially if you're learning. There are times where, sure, I pulled out and it, it, it continued to go up. Um, for example, uh, Kohl's. I bought Kohl's shares recently. Um, I spent a lot of money on those on those shares and it went up a lot. Um, I expected to only make a couple percent just because I know it's kind of a slow moving stock because they pay a high dividend. So I got out, I made, I think it was like two or 3%. But after I got out, it just kept going and going and going and going. I didn't care. I didn't even look at it. It's like, I, I, I don't want to look at it because that's when you become an emotional trader and you can't be an emotional trader. So take your tiny profits, move on with your life. That's a good way to manage that risk is to not care about, you know, that home run or making more. Be okay with a little bit of profit here and there. I'm um, the same thing with, um, with, with risk is know when to get out. So if I make 2%, I'm fine. If I lose, you know, 10% or 20%, I know that I'm going to lose 10 or 20. So every time I make a play, I know when I'm going to get in, when I'm going to get out. I never let, for example, if I'm doing an option contract, me personally, I never, ever, ever let it go below 50%. I'll never lose all my money on an option contract. If it goes to 51 and I close it, and then 10 minutes later, if I would have held it and it shoots up to 200%, oh well, I don't care. Yes, I missed out on that because I closed it just a little bit too early, but I don't care. Because once you start caring about that, that's when you start making mistakes and that's when you start losing money. To kind of uh, cap or recap everything, uh, probably the most important part of my whole little spiel is you have today, Saturday and Sunday to figure out your budget for next week. How much are you gonna put in your account? How much are you gonna spend on Monday? then don't deviate from that plan. If you spend it all in the first 10 minutes on Monday, cool. Sit back, relax, wait for Tuesday, and then do the same thing on Tuesday. Have an exact amount that you want to spend on Tuesday, stick to it. If you spend less, great. You don't have to spend it all. But if you, you know, if you say, hey, I'm gonna spend $100 on Tuesday, and you only end up spending 50, fine. But then spend $100 on Wednesday and Thursday.